This video is brought to you by Squarespace. More on that later. Hello and welcome to Broadsword Wargaming. My name is Oliver and in this video I wanted to talk about the current state of Warhammer 40,000 and what we can do to fix it if it is indeed broken. So stay tuned. Warhammer 40,000 has been around for 35 years and it is a game that has been enjoyed by hundreds of thousands of players. But is it as dead as that Imperial Guardsman? Let's find out. Alright, where do we start with this kind of video? It's one I've been thinking about for a while and I've, I've written some notes down, that's how fancy this one is, because I just feel like it's something I wanted to discuss and bring into light to the general people out there in a positive way. Uh, I got a little quote here from Albert Einstein, and he said, learn from yesterday, live for today, and hope for tomorrow. And that is the ethos I want to bring forward. I don't want this to be a bashing of anything or anyone, because what's the point? What's that bringing to anything? That's not my, that's not my way. That's not what I want for the community. I want to find ways to make the game more enjoyable for everybody. Now, of course, I'm going to open this up by saying I don't think there is one hot fix we can do to make this better for everybody, because everybody plays the game in such different ways. With that, I think we need to look at where Warhammer started briefly and how we've got to the state we're at now. 1987 was the first iteration of Warhammer 40,000, the Rogue Trader edition. Admittedly, I didn't play this, but as far as I can tell, it was a little bit more like an RPG. It wasn't truly until this beautiful box came out that Warhammer as we know it began. 1993 saw the first releases of Codexes. Now I played the game, this is the first edition I properly played as I never really played the Rogue Trader edition. I had the Codex Space Wolves and Eldar, my brother had the Codex Orcs, and my other brother had the Tyranids and the Space Marines. You'll notice some similarities and some differences back there. Army selection was characters, mobs, and support here. There was no fast attack, HQ troops, elites, etc. Um, the, but the game was built in a similar way, you pay points for models. We had war gear cards, which were much like special weapons, so Gazgul could have an adamantium skull, or an orc could have a custom shooter. And the game was quite complex. Vehicles could have individual elements blown off them, uh, an arm, another arm, a leg, you hit the body, I think you hit the head back then. Special weapons had full pages for profiles with modifiers to short and long range, depending on whether you're not half range or double range, much like we have rapid fire now. It was also kind of the version of Hero Hammer, which we've gone to and from over the years, but Hero Hammer, you'd have a couple of units of troops and an, av an avatar or a Dreadnought or Ragnar Blackmane or Gazgold Thracker killing stuff. And that was kind of the main part of the game because it was aimed at younger people, it was more affordable to buy a single model or a metal blister pack than it was to buy a full army. 1998 saw the release of third edition. And to be honest with you, this was the version we played right up until the end of seventh, uh, when eighth edition dropped in 2017. The rules kind of expanded and we ended up with possible rules bloat, maybe by the end of it, we got codex supplements, which you have today, same thing, same element. I had a codex supplement here for codex assassins. This is about eight pages and was printed upside down. Uh, you probably can't see that, but it's upside down. So some things the games which I've never really changed. Um, quality control, still out the window. We saw some of the older books survive through third into fourth, fourth into fifth, and, and the codex has never quite kept up with the editions over the years. Up until eighth edition, when the whole game changed, the end of seventh, the whole, the whole sort of universe moved on, and we ended up with Primaris, and then we ended up into ninth. Our Imperium is besieged. Across a thousand worlds, we fight for our survival. Those that would tear humanity down are legion. Our forces are few. Our enemies, many. There is no respite. There is no mercy. All right, so what was the point in looking back at Warhammer, I hear you ask? Well, hopefully, you'll have seen that there have been some patterns in relation to their releases and how the games are played and how they've evolved over the years between then and now. But what are the issues with Ninth? If we're being honest, CP. Too many CP points, too many stratagems, too confusing. And Games Workshop have addressed this by the release of Nephilim where they tried to drop the amount of CP you would have. They tried to make you pay for relics and warlord traits. And in my mind, that seemed like a way to address the issue of the complexity of the game. It got rid of so many various rerolls, so many special abilities, so much, so much bookkeeping work on the side. And stratagems themselves are great when you know yours and your opponents, but unfortunately, most of us are casual players. I don't always know what my opponent's army can do. Yes, that's my fault for not knowing that, 
but I don't get the opportunity to play as often as I would like to. And I think 99% of us out there are not the top end competitive players. So we don't always know what's going to happen. So is having 12 CP, being able to do this eight CP first turn move where you, you combine all these elements up, which is cool, but you combine all these elements up and you destroy your opponent turn one. Sitting there then for another four or five turns, waiting for the game to end so you lose, isn't fun. And it's not really fun when you're the one winning or the one losing. Uh, another issue is, and now this isn't directly related, but the price of Warhammer is relative. And it is a part of this video. It is its own separate element as well. But things like codexes, supplements, additional cards have always been there. You've seen that. I had the Assassin's Codex with six pages printed upside down. And that's still there now. But unfortunately, the game is changing so much and so quickly. And Games Workshop are, I think, genuinely trying to change things with the regular updates and FAQs is leading to confusion. Look at, for example, the Votan list, the, the codex that just got released. It was changed and FAQ'd before it even came out. The same happened with Eldar, with Chaos. And this is a recurring theme where I think Games Workshop are trying to battle the differences between power levels and of the armies and keeping the game fun. And the game has evolved since the rules were even developed. Should there be playtesting better? I don't know where the issue is there. I, 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 you know, a part of this is trying to sell more models because they're better and then changing them so they're worse, you buy different ones. That is a complete separate topic, but it is relative. The price of Warhammer is expensive, so therefore we should be enjoying it as much as possible. Now a quick word from our sponsors, Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform. It's easy to set up and comes with a ton of pre-built website templates. I managed to add products, logos and designs in just a few minutes. You could use this to sell your miniatures or terrain, or perhaps you just want a way to help you to stay focused and show off some of your projects to your friends. If so, why not make a blog, even if it's just for yourself? So make sure to check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash broadsword wargaming to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Right, let's get back to the video. If I was a new player and I wanted to, I played a few games of the Recruit Edition without all the extra bits and I started to play a few more and I realized I was losing down at my gaming store against my friend a lot. You're going to Google good Warhammer Space Marine army list or best units in Space Marines and you are going to get a whole ton of information and you're going to go, okay, whatever, three Redemptive Dreadnoughts is good. So I'll go buy three Redemptive Dreadnoughts, even if you don't like the models specifically. And, and I get that here in the shop with newer players coming in, having never played the game before, and they go, oh, these unit looks cool, but I've heard they're not very good, so I'm not going to buy them. I'm going to buy this other thing that I don't like as much, but is better. And is that really good for the game? Is that really what we want from a hobby and a game we're supposed to enjoy? Are we looking for the meta lists, the best lists? Because the majority of people, it doesn't really matter. Most of us don't play often enough to really know how to take advantage of a meta list. If you go to an event, and I've run two here now, one where Tau were top tier and one where Tyranids were top tier. And in fact, in the second one, there were no Tau players there. And that was six, seven months apart from each other. If you put the worst list in the hands of one of the best players, they're going to do better than I would with it. If you put the best list in my hands, I'm going to do, I'm still probably not going to win an event. So how relevant are these minor changes that the internet or in general seem to get blown up? How relevant are they to how most of us are playing the game? I'd imagine not as relevant as the internet in general would make us believe. Now that's not to say things are fair and balanced, but this game I don't think originally was ever intended to be played at such a top tier competitive level. But the competitive side is creeping into the more narrative and that's why I see less crusade games in, in store. That's why I see less crusade games online because people aren't playing that way anymore. Uh, and, and that's just the development of the game over time. That's not an attack at anybody. It's just a fact. Competitive play is more popular. The FAQs, the books, is frustrating for newer players. The CP changes and the CP points can be irritating. And I think most people haven't enjoyed that bloat of that side. People don't enjoy bringing multiple codexes, looking through 50 stratagems to see what's going to work for them. So perhaps taking and learning to play with less strategies, just taking five each is good. Maybe that makes the game better, quicker and smoother. Losing things like unit rerolls like we had back in eighth, where you could castle up with a, a chaplain or a commander rerolling ones to hit, a lieutenant rerolling ones to wound, someone adding ones to, 
to AP damage weapons, and the whole game became about endless rerolls, and it didn't really used to be quite that strong, and that is more prevalent now. And again, Games Workshop have tried to address that by making things less area and more picking an individual unit when it comes to buffing. Uh, another thing I've done, and I played a full Heros Heresy campaign with Lachlan from Zorpazorp, you can check the videos out there, and this was a narrative campaign. We had the Ultramarines against the Word Bearers, and if we are honest, we didn't play points. We didn't really play match points. We played what we thought was relevant to the campaigns and the missions. And like so many of us, if you go and play a game and you're losing by turn one, why not bring on some reinforcements? And this doesn't have to be points. It doesn't have to say, right, I lost 400 points a model in turn one. I'm going to bring 400 points of models on. It's more about keeping the game fun for a couple of turns. It's no fun for anybody when you turn up to your monthly game and it's, it's over by turn one or turn two. It's no fun. So why not bring another unit of tactical marines on? Why not bring that tank back or bring that dreadnought back? And this doesn't have to happen indefinitely. There doesn't have to be any hard and fast rules. Just do it until it kind of works. Do we really care ultimately if you win or lose at Warhammer in a fun, casual environment? Why should it matter? The ultimate thing is to have a good time. And if making that game last longer or making it fairer is better and you enjoy it more and you can have a beer in a relaxed environment, then why not do that? Home rules used to be such a big thing back in the 90s, where if you played something and played a rule and thought, oh, actually, that doesn't really work for me. It doesn't feel very realistic. It doesn't feel like this, what my troops or units should be doing. Why not home rule it? Why not, if you and your friends are playing each other, have that rule. Now, of course, you can't bring home rules really into, into an even environment where you're playing people you don't know, because that wouldn't be fair. You need to all be playing the same game. But if you've got a friendship group or your local store, or you're playing a narrative event, why not do things that feel thematic and feel exciting? And that is why I still like Heresy a little bit more than 40K because I feel like you're on a slightly more even playing field where you're all playing essentially Space Marines. I don't really know what more there is to say. I hope I've covered the general points and at least brought up the topic of things you can do to make the game better for yourselves. If you have done something, please do let me know in the comments below. Keep them clean, keep them friendly. This isn't meant to be a rage inducing video. It's just trying to touch upon the topic that perhaps playing the game how you want to play the game is better than how the game is supposed to be played. The rules are a guideline. You can think of it that way. If you enjoy the competitive side and the, the, the high end meta, that's how you enjoy the game. If you enjoy the game and you like to bring 10 Tau, 5 Eldar, an Avatar and a Dreadnought in the same list, do that. Who cares? Just enjoy the game, enjoy painting it, playing it and playing it with your friends because that I think is getting lost over the years. It's a hobby, it's fun. And for 99% of us, we're probably never going to be the world's number one player. It's just a fact. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and can take something from it. If you did, please do check out the links below. There's links down there to Patreon to support the channel. You get access to a private Discord, you get onto the wall of fame, you get to do a monthly hobby hangout with myself and we chat in there all the time about these kinds of things. There's also the shop, uh, it's myself, my partner, and our child run this shop here. It's a gaming store. And, and I hope you can see I'm passionate about the game and I've been involved for a long time. And it means a lot to me that other people enjoy it too. Also check out the affiliate links and I'll leave you there. Mainly remember, go and have fun. Enjoy the hobby the way you want to enjoy the hobby, not the way you're told to do so. So with that, take care, have fun, and I'll catch you in another video.